As stores continue to close, industries finding themselves shuttered in the dark, some assets are rising to record highs. There is a very unsettling feeling that is visible in various indicators and that corresponds to the obvious and the apparent. Just look out your window as you move through the city center. It's strange. The traffic isn't quite there. The buzz is gone. The desperation is right in front of your eyes. No amount of stimulus will solve this and neither will the confetti that follows. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. People ask this question all the time. Why are the store closures bad? I don't care if that store goes under. I don't care about that business. I do not care about this multinational big box store that has 12,000 stores across the United States, more across the rest of North America, into Europe, and so on. Who cares about them? But if we only understood how the entire system connects to itself, it starts to paint a much more important picture than just that business. Because of course, all of these different big box stores, all of them have their own individual employees. Okay, so those people, they start losing their jobs. Then we have the cascading effect. The nearby stores, the anchor stores go down. Then, of course, the small stores go with it. Then we've got problems with the lenders, the bankruptcies, and so on. But more importantly than all that, because I've discussed it so many times, I want to highlight the fact that what we have here isn't necessarily just one dimensional. You've got to look at this problem and realize the pace at which it's occurring is too fast. And that speed that it's going at is unsustainable and, and the market simply can't pick up all of these additional people. If a business goes under, it happens all the time, that person can then reapply to another place and they can start to get their life back together. And it just happens in a natural you know, wave, essentially. The wave comes in, it goes out, and everything is just running as it should. But when you've got thousands and thousands and thousands of stores closing, you've got different industries, maybe it's the oil industry or others that we've talked about here, and they're all going down all at once, then you cannot replace those jobs. So what do they do? They paper over it. But in every single occurrence in history that ended badly, that's what we're seeing today. This is what I try to highlight on every single show, not, not necessarily uh, you know, bringing this up to this detail, but I wanted to make it known right here. Now I've lost about 30% of the audience, so let's get into it right away. With all of the store closures that are taking place, you would think, you would think that the actual store closures would have gone up. But for some strange reason, and it is very curious that, I know, I bring this information from CoreSight, who is tracking all of it, November 6th data, so we've got recent data here, and it's showing you the 2020 year-to-date closures, which is very high, mind you, it is over 8,000. It hasn't really moved. This has not moved since the last time I checked it, if it was you know, maybe two weeks ago. That might have gone up just a small amount. It might have been closer to the 8,000, but regardless, we're still there. Even though there have been so many different retailers that have talked about this that I've talked about here on the channel, why isn't it making its way to that number? I don't know. Maybe they're behind on this. Who knows? I'll give you the information as I have it available. This is what we have on the CoreSight website, and I'll give you some some examples here. As thousands struggle to pay utility bills in our region next week, Maryland companies can start shutting off services. Maryland, Virginia, and D.C. each offered some relief from utility payments as their certain restrictions created financial hardships for thousands of residents. Turnoffs can begin Sunday, November 15th. On October 1st, utility companies were allowed to start issuing termination notices for customers behind on their payment. So here they are now today. You're looking here at the data, the numbers showing you that 20,000 residents have not paid their water bills up from 1,000 this time last year. Then it goes on talking about having 100,000 past due accounts totaling nearly $60 million for this particular area. Now, that's just a small piece, but imagine this is probably going on all over the place to a different degree, but essentially what we have is so many people that not only have they not paid their mortgage, they haven't been 
paying any of their bills, if they don't have any employment coming through, if their benefits had run out, where's the money coming from? So this, this is really something very serious. I don't know if they're going to extend this. I don't know if they're going to be able to just shut these people, you know, their, their utilities off. We'll see what happens. If that's the case, it's going to be a lot of very, very upset people. The stimulus needs to come through for these individuals in order to keep this facade on. Now, continuing on, we'll see what happens. AT&T, Warner Media beginning layoffs. They don't know the exact number yet, but they believe it's going to be in the thousands. So we'll see when I get that official data. I'm just showing you that is affecting all different types of businesses. Pet value closing all 358 U.S. stores. And this is just another business that has been taken out. Regal Cinemas closing down remaining New York and California locations. This is just uh, one that I had showed not that long ago. We have AMC going bankrupt essentially, and they have very little time left before that happens. And you've got Regal Cinemas is just basically just closing up shop. And I'm interested to see what happens to this industry entirely. It has definitely been shaken up, that's for sure. Furla USA has filed for a voluntary petition for relief under Chapter 11 in New York. But they're not done yet, don't worry, because they're going to restructure and make it all better again. So we have this going on today where you'll have some of these businesses that quote-unquote restructure, but I'm not sure that they'll most of them will be able to be successful. It's just the way it is. A lot of them have been switching to online instead using the e-commerce commerce just because this is the way that they can close down their real estate which is extremely expensive today part of the problem that i was discussing initially at this part of the video where we're looking at the rents being too high the revenues too low and that's obviously something that cannot work for an extended period now I want to switch gears to what's going on with the central banks and the stock market. I found this interesting. So there's two articles here I want to show you. I believe this one is the one from August. And it shows that there are some serious issues going on in Japan. And they're trying to fix it with actually the same thing that's creating the problem in the first place. BOJ, paying banks to boost relief, compensates for negative interest rates. Come on, what the heck are they doing right now? I mean, it's unbelievable. I missed this initially when it was coming through, but now I'll show you how it connects into what we're looking at today. As the Bank of Japan tries to pump more funds to companies, it is offering banks hundreds of millions of dollars in bonuses, a move that analysts say is aimed at easing the side effects of its negative interest rate policy. So you've got a problem where you bring it down into the negative, and what do you do? You basically fill in the gap you put a band-aid or bandage on it i mean th this is ridiculous you're not solving the problem you can't just paper over garbage paper it doesn't work like that and then we have this boj unveils a scheme incentivizing regional bank consolidation so we're going one step further here the bank of japan unveiled on tuesday a scheme aimed at incentivizing regional lenders to consolidate and help revitalize regional economies a move which echoes growing concern over the health of the country's banking system they got problems and they're trying to cover it up by doing this by printing money out of thin air and buying etfs by doing things like yield curve control and all of the QE that they've been implementing and then it's breaking things so what do they do they just throw more money at it it's unbelievable in here they're actually saying do the cost cutting measures do the consolidations buy one business and what happens when one big business buys another business of course you cut people so expect that there will be layoffs in this industry as we see them actually go through with it if they do I want to know if you're in Japan let me know what's happening on the ground this is so key I just talked about it uh, in the last video where we've got people all over the world talking about the issue with lumber. And of course, this is very important to discuss between us because we're only going to get a limited set of information coming from the mainstream. So that's why I really highly want to thank everybody for their help on that information. Thank you. 
BOJ balance sheet is a percentage of the Japan GDP from 20% to 120%. So as soon as the financial crisis time frame was on, they just started expanding and expanding and it's gone absolutely ballistic as a percentage of that GDP. But if you look at it in, in their actual own currency or in dollar terms or in anything, really, it has gone through the roof. This is an interesting one. Rising mortgage rates are squeezing home buyers in the UK. With this issue here in 2020, limiting lenders' capacity to deal with the surge in demand, experts offer advice for potential owners who are on a budget. And that part of it is actually below this. But I just want to show you something. And people in the UK, please let me know what you see, of course. But you could see in this first paragraph they explain it british home buyers are on a but on a budget face a frustrating puzzle the bank of england has kept interest rates at a record low you know this we discussed it here 0.1 percent essentially straight to the bottom and yet mortgage lenders have been driving up their own rates demand for homes is high right now and that's in part because of the government temporarily scrapping a related levy known as stamp duty in july sales soon soared to their highest level in over a decade prices posted their biggest annual increase since 2015 and then it gets into more detail here about what's happening but i just think it's interesting that the profit here is clearly being made when we see that the central bank pushing interest rates down to the very bottom but people that have to borrow money in many cases has been rising whether that's you know let's say in, in a recession during economic hardship people will pull money from wherever they can get it maybe that's a credit card they're taking from their home equity and of course they got to pay that back in this is a problem oftentimes it's not it's really understated, I should say, and it's not being understood as to how far this will go and will weaken the economy because when you use money today, you take it away from tomorrow. Well, it's status quo in New Zealand. RBNZ increases stimulus with offer of cheap loans to banks. New Zealand Central Bank will begin offering cheap loans to lenders within weeks to further reduce borrowing costs and stimulate the economy as it recovers. Fantastic. You know, this is so great. We're going to have super low interest rates. We're going to have a quantitative easing program. Everybody's doing it now. So, hey, why not? I mean, let's Let's just all do this let's just all get in the game reduce your interest rates if you got a problem reduce them more and of course confetti will be the final result this Wall Street Journal article had this fantastic chart that I wanted you to see and it, it's amazing to see this all listed out here the stock market right now is ridiculous it's insane it's overvalued by almost any measure. That's what they say. That's a quote. Ratio of the S&P 500's current reading to average since 1954. All right? Is any of these, are any of these in the undervaluation level? No, not at all. Not even one. Every single one of them to a degree or another is an overvaluation. Now that should tell you something. Let me read them quickly. Household equity allocation, that's an overvaluation. Price to sales ratio, same thing. Price book ratio, Q ratio, Buffett indicator, dividend yield, Schiller PE, and price earnings ratio. Every single one of these has gone berserk. They've gone crazy. And yet we are sitting here today pretending that everything is okay. Nonsense. Walmart to test robotic deliveries with Cruise's electric self-driving vehicles. It looks like this industry is going in this direction big time. They're pumping billions and billions of it left, right, and center. I also think it's interesting because Walmart just got rid of robots in some of its stores. But in this case here, it looks like it's going 
in that direction still. So we'll see what happens. I just thought it would be something interesting to put here. I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, please hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you are supporting me. Thank you for that. If you want to learn how to sell stuff online, you can go around and click here, click there, and people will sell you this and that. Or you can just go to my course because it's free, the Amazon GPS.com. If you want to understand the history, you want to know the four asset classes, you want to learn how to make money. All of that is in these two books and you can get it at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook instead, themoneygps.com. But don't go anywhere because this video has a lot of information. You may not have seen it. If not, you definitely want to watch it. Click it. I'll see you there.